Yeah, bring a conversation starting piece to your agent rather than kind of making them tell you what to do. Come to them and say, here's the type of property and the price point I'd like to purchase in. I've looked at these zip codes or these counties and these seem like candidate areas. It's it's huge. You know, it, it sets the whole tone for the relationship. I know you probably pre-screen agent. I investors too, because you're getting a lot of calls here and the successful agents in any town are going to get a ton of calls. And so they actually are probably going to be in more demand than the other way around. So what, what would a good client who would rise at the top of your prospect list look like? What would be some of the characteristics that people listening can try to do to be a good client to some of these best agents out there? Great question, Chad. So I would love to work with everybody that I talk to, but like you said, you have to kind of qualify and select. Uh, good clients to me are people who do their own independent homework and research, and then they kind of ask me for a, a cross check. It, rather than just saying, hey, John, you know, what's the rent in this neighborhood? When an investor says, hey, the research I've done shows the rent is 1200 in this neighborhood. Is that the same thing you're seeing? It shows that they're not just kind of throwing it over the fence for me to do the work for them and that they're willing to kind of take the reins and you have to take ownership as an investor in your portfolio and your transactions. So, you know, people who I can tell are going to be pulling their weight as far as evaluation analysis, you know, even helping find deals and vet deals. It, it's somebody that I definitely am more inclined to work with. I want to throw an idea out to you that I try to teach in my class, uh, Real Estate Start School, is I have a document that I've always used for years with my agents called a, um, it's a target property profile. And essentially what I do, and my agent will help me put some of this data together, but I try to describe the location I'm looking for, the numbers I'm looking for, the type of property I'm looking for, and maybe just the type of opportunities, maybe some situations so that they can do some keyword searches. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's, I try to make it like less than a page, really simple, straightforward. But then if you have a client who has something like that, would that be part of conveying that they've done their preparation that, hey, all right, this is somebody who's who's done their homework a little bit more than normal? Absolutely, yeah, that's, that's huge because when I get a call from somebody that says, hey, I want to invest in the Philly area. I'm from New York. Where should I invest? It's just like, uh, where do you want to invest? Like, what do you want your portfolio to look like? What's your metric for a good deal? And it's just kind of lazy. Like you said, you know, come to an agent with, it, it doesn't have to be a final, you know, set in stone kind of thing, but come to them and say, here's the type of property and the price point I'd like to purchase in. I've looked at these zip codes or these counties and these seem like candidate areas. And what it does also is it kind of helps the agent avoid violating fair housing laws and saying, oh, don't invest over there. That's a rough area. So that's another thing that kind of sets me on edge is when somebody says, hey, tell me where the good areas or where the bad areas are, because they actually do send you know, fair housing testers to kind of make sure agents aren't kind of breaking the rules and breaking the law. Yeah. In the background of that, I mean, that doesn't mean everybody's doing that today, but you know, 50 years ago, I'm reading a book now about a lot of the, you know, the, um, the, the, the financing and real estate agents and people who would steer people to different neighborhoods because of race and, and, you know, it, it, it defunded whole neighborhoods because mm -hmm. banks wouldn't loan there, agents wouldn't show properties there. So there's a, you know, there's a logic behind, <laughs> behind the laws, but as an investor, we, we, we need to be using numbers, right? We need to be using opportunity and there's, a, there's opportunities in low price neighborhoods. There's opportunities in high price neighborhoods. There are different types of opportunities, but like, I really like that you're saying, and an investor can't come to you. They could be a brand new investor, but they just can't come to you having done no homework, having done no preparation. They need to study it. Like listen to podcasts, look on bigger pockets, listen to my podcast, you know, go actually get some homework and have some tools together. And an agent will still be your biggest resource. Like I, I think like I would be, I would bet you'd be willing to help them do some more market research. If they said, I'm looking for a neighborhood that can produce more cash flow. Like I don't, I'm, I like growth, but I really want cash flow. 
and it seems like these two neighborhoods are pretty good, you might sell them, well, that neighborhood is better than the other one because the whole house, houses are old, they're gonna have more maintenance on them. Like, is that a kind of conversation that is a more meaty conversation, something that'll be helpful if they'd already done that kind it of is, homework? It is, yeah. Yeah, bring a conversation starting piece to your agent rather than kind of making them tell you what to do. It's, it's huge, you know, it, it sets the whole tone for the relationship. I hope you enjoyed that interview clip from John Nicely. If you want to listen to the full podcast interview, you can see a link below in the description. And if you have any questions, any thoughts that came up during that interview, be sure to leave them below. I would love to hear from you in the comment section. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss anything. I have new videos that come out every Friday morning at five and there's a lot of good stuff coming. And if you like these kind of interviews about the nitty gritty details of real estate and real estate investing, I think you'll like the playlist I have linked below in the description about other interviews and topics that I've done on just the details of real estate and how you can actually move forward and start doing it for yourself. Thank you so much for watching Coach Carson TV. My name is Chad Carson. You can also call me Coach. And Coach Carson TV is all about investing in real estate, achieving financial independence, and doing more of what matters. See you next time.